Doc Savage Origin explained. Doc Savage rests in the memories of those lucky few who cared enough to watch the film or pick up a comic or two of this man, whom Sony calls the world's first superhero. He may not be the most famous pulp superhero, but he was certainly one of the most influential ones. He was published in 1933 before heroes like Superman and Batman. Stan Lee and his likes have called him the progenitor of modern superheroes. This character was jam-packed with abilities, skills and powers, all of which he used to fight bad guys and bring them to justice. Doc Savage has Sherlock Holmes's mental abilities, Tarzan's strength, Bruce Banner's scientific knowledge and Captain America's righteousness and goodness. Doc Savage was created at Street and Smith Publications by publisher Henry W. Ralston and editor John L. Nanovic, but the main contributor was Lester Dent. In 1975, director and producer George Powell made Doc Savage the Man of Bronze, with Ron Ely in the titular role. Later, cinema greats like Arnold Schwarzenegger, Chris Hemsworth and Dwayne Johnson were just about to play Doc Savage in films, but the projects never saw the light of day due to development issues. However, Marvelous Videos hasn't forgotten to pay its respect and tribute to this great comic character that had a humble beginning in pulp magazines, but went on to enjoy the respect of anyone who wanted to write or create anything on the lines of fantasy and adventure. Let's explore Doc Savage and reminisce the beauty of pulp magazines and the gems that they produced. Before we go into our list, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click from you, but it means a lot to us. Thank you. Let's begin. Number one, Doc Savage started as a pulp magazine and then radio, film and comic books. Street and Smith publications were having a gala time financially because of the success of their The Shadow magazine. To capitalise further, they started to print the Doc Savage magazine from 1933, which went on until 1949 and had 181 issues in total most of which were written by creator Lester Dent. However, Lester used the house name Kenneth Robeson instead of his own. It's important to note that he was initially conceptualised by an executive of Street and Smith named Henry W. Ralston and the publication's editor John L. Nanovich. Despite being one of the few pulp heroes to get his own magazine, Doc Savage's popularity went down with the tides of time until 1964, when Bantam Books reprinted the comic's individual magazine novels, starting with The Man of Bronze. Artist James Bammer did the covers and gave Doc Savage his iconic bronze hair and skin, torn khaki shirt and more. By 1990, Bantam Books had published all of the 181 issues and unpublished novels. The story titled Escape from Loki detailed the story of how Doc Savage met his five psychics during the First World War. Doc Savage was also featured in several comics, radio shows and a 1975 film titled Doc Savage The Man of Bronze. To this day, he serves as an inspiration to people who wish to write about fantasy and adventure. Interestingly, there's a possibility that Doc Savage was inspired by the American military man and writer Richard Henry Savage, who had penned down more than 40 books on the themes of mystery and adventure, and also lived an adventurous life as a military officer. As far as his legacy is concerned, Stan Lee himself noted that Doc Savage was the forerunner of modern superheroes, like the Man of Steel and also the one who helped create superhero teams. Without Doc Savage, the face of teams such as the Avengers and the Fantastic Four would have been very different. Doc Savage is also unique because he has appeared in comics published by both Marvel and DC. Number 2 Doc Savage Origin Explained Doc Savage was born as Clark Savage Jr. His father assembled a team of scientists who trained Doc Savage right from birth. This relentless training helped Doc carve his mental and physical abilities to the best shape humanly possible. The final result was a Doc Savage with nearly superhuman abilities, from programming a computer, to designing a weapon, to playing the piano and planning an invasion. There's nothing that Doc Savage cannot do. He was initially trained as a surgeon, but later he mastered almost every other field of study from ventriloquism and music to warfare and neurology. Doc Savage lived by a simple code passed down to him by his father. It was to right the wrongs and punish evildoers. According to Lester Dent himself, Doc Savage had Sherlock Holmes's deductive abilities, Tarzan's physical abilities, Craig Kennedy's scientific education and Abraham Lincoln's goodness. Savage is also a physician, scientist, detective, explorer and researcher. Furthermore, he has a photographic memory, efficiency in martial arts, and he is a master of mimicry and disguise. 
Savage is also a rich man whose office is on the 86th floor of a skyscraper. He owns fleets of luxurious cars, trucks, aircraft, ships, etc. tucked in somewhere in a secret hangar on the Hudson River. If you thought that the list was over, then wait, he also has a retreat in the Arctic where he goes to think, and it's called the Fortress of Solitude. If you remember, Superman also has one such hideout by the same name. When the First World War broke out in Europe, Doc Savage was captured and kept with other prisoners of war at a camp. There he met William Harper Little John, or Johnny the first member of his team named the Fabulous Five. Johnny was an expert in geology and archaeology. When Doc Savage and Johnny were liberated from the camp, they met the other members of the team. Lieutenant Colonel Andrew Blodgett Mayfair, or Monk, was an industrial chemist. Brigadier General Theodore Marley Brooks, or Ham, was an accomplished attorney, who was considered to be the world's most well-dressed man. Colonel John Renwick, or Rennie, was a civil engineer, he was a giant man whose pastime activity was knocking out panels of wooden doors. Lastly, Major Thomas J. Roberts or Tom was an electrical engineer and a fragile looking character who would fight like a wildcat in a battle. Another recurring character outside of the Fab Five is that of Patricia Savage, or Pat, who's Doc's cousin. Doc Savage has largely disappeared from the minds of people due to the rust that is called time. He may not be the most famous character today, but he was definitely the most influential in many regards, and has been an inspiration for several greats of the superhero world like Superman and Batman. As mentioned earlier, both Superman and Doc Savage seek mental peace and solitude at their respective fortresses of solitude. Both their first names are Clark. Superman is famously known as a Man of Steel, and it was clearly influenced by Doc Savage, who is often referred to as the Man of Bronze. Bob Kane's and Bill Finger's Batman is another superhero that owes a lot to Doc Savage. Both of them are uber-rich people who fight crime using high-tech weaponry and gadgets. Both of them are considered to be the world's greatest detectives in their own respective worlds. Doc Savage is also a bit of a playboy, much like Bruce Wayne. They also share their morals, as they would do anything to ensure that no life is lost. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles had a character by the name of Mr. Brawns, who was also clearly a homage to this iconic pulp superhero. Number 3, Alternate Versions Because Doc Savage has appeared in several comics like Dark Horse, Marvel, DC, Millennium, etc. with varying continuities, it isn't easy to chalk out a specific and linear continuity that we can refer to. However, we are bringing you several versions of Doc Savage that have appeared in various comics. Marvel's Earth 616 Earth 616 is the Earth of the Central Universe from the Marvel Multiverse, which is also called the Prime Universe. In 1972, he teamed up with Ben Grimm and resided on Earth-616. However, since then, Marvel Comics lost some of the rights and has failed to publish crossover stories featuring Doc Savage and The Thing. Yet he continues to exist as a part of the history of the Marvel Universe. DC's Earth-1 Doc Savage lived on Earth-1 at least in Dennis O'Neill's Doc Savage series from the 80s, is a different Earth from the Earth on which the mainstream DC Universe characters reside. It was here that Doc Savage was featured in a crossover with The Shadow. As far as the Millennium and Dark Horse comics are concerned, they don't exactly have a shared universe, so it's difficult to figure out where they exactly live. More on this in our next entry. Number 4 from Golden Age to Modern Age Having been created in what can only be called the Golden Age of superheroes and comics, Doc Savage was the epitome of all things any person would want. In 1941, Street and Smith Comics published Doc Savage Comics No. 5 and turned him into a proper superhero. He landed up in Tibet and had a blue hood along with a ruby on his forehead. This ruby could deflect bullets and hypnotise anyone who gazed long enough into its mysterious and mystical red light. They started calling him the Invincible, and he bore little to no resemblance to his initial appearance in the pulp magazines. Apart from featuring in his own comics, he appeared in several issues along with The Shadow, such as Shadow Comics Volume 3, Issue 10 of 1944. In the modern age, or post-golden age, Marvel Comics published him in 1972 in books titled The Man of Bronze, Brand of the Werewolf, Death in Silver, and The Monsters. 
1975, Curtis Magazines, which was an imprint of Marvel, released eight black and white comics. As mentioned earlier, Doc Savage teamed up with Marvel's The Thing in Marvel 2-in-1 issue 21. This was a very crucial issue because it laid the foundation of future stories such as the Project Pegasus Saga and Squadron Supreme Death of a Universe. DC published a four-issue miniseries and another 24 issues from 1987 to 1990. The stories pirouetted around Doc's Mayan sweetheart, Monya, other characters like Doc's grandson, Chip, and detailed the backstories of Doc's parents. Dark Horse Comics published The Shadow and Doc Savage, The Case of the Shrieking Skeletons, and Doc Savage, Curse of the Fire God in 1995. Dynamite Entertainment published Doc Savage, The Man of Bronze in 2013. Number 5. Live Action Adaptations In 1967, it was reported that Chuck Connors would play Doc Savage in a film called The Thousand-Headed Man. However, complications with rights led to the axing of the project. But Doc Savage graced the silver screen for the first time in director and producer George Powell's 1975 film Doc Savage The Man of Bronze which starred Ron Ely in the titular role. While some consider it an underrated gem, it largely received mixed to negative responses from critics and audiences alike, and turned out to be a box office bomb. The film's failure is credited to the loss of funding during filming. In the film, Doc Savage leaves his fortress of solitude to embark on a journey to find out the reality behind his father's death. When the principal photography on the Man of Bronze was going on, Another film with the title Doc Savage, The Arch Enemy of Evil was also being filmed. However, the poor reception of the first film resulted in the abandonment of this new project. Doc Savage, The Arch Enemy of Evil would have featured a German-speaking villain with a man-eating octopus for a pet. This resembled a 1937 novel titled The Feathered Octopus. Philip Jose Farmer wrote another screenplay based on the January 1936 pulp novel Murder Mirage. It would have been a crossover between a retired Sherlock Holmes and Doc Savage set in the year 1936. Alas, it was never filmed. In 1999, Arnold Schwarzenegger was supposed to play this polymath's role, but the project was shelved when Arnold became the governor of California. However, hopes are still high as there's news that Doc Savage would return in a television show, which was initially meant to be a live action film. Despite the several cancelled films, it's important to note that if and when Doc Savage returns to screens, we must as a population embrace his virtue and sincerity and his statuesque, almost heavenly glory. At the same time, we must ensure that we don't succumb to the complications that may arise due to the time difference between the age he was written for the first time and the present time. Number 6. Future Possibilities In 2016, director Shane Black revealed that he was going to make a Doc Savage film starring Dwayne Johnson for original film and Sony Pictures. However, the project was later transformed into a TV series. According to the latest news, The Man of Bronze would grace a small screen because Sony Pictures Television and Original Films have partnered with Condé Nast Entertainment. The new series would chronicle Doc Savage's adventures and feature everything from dinosaurs to secret societies. There would be some intelligent and deadly villains, cool weapons and gadgets, fatal traps, and elaborate conspiracies to rule the earth. Unfortunately, that's all the information we have on the series. And we hope that the world's first superhero, as promoted by Sony, doesn't have to go through another development hell. This is all the time we had for today's episode. We hope you guys liked it. It would be awesome if you guys can take some time to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to tell us which topic you want us to cover in the comment section. Have a fantastic day ahead and stay safe. Never fear the man